Okay, everyone, let's go over SPY options weekly trading strategies. Trading the SPY options is very difficult, guys, but it's also very lucrative. Dangers and the advantages of trading SPY, especially if you want to grow a small account fast, but also we need to keep it real with how dangerous it is to trade the SPY that um, expires on Monday. Wednesdays and Fridays. So I'm going to go to a case studies. We'll go straight to the charts and the case studies. So, and here we go. So you can see that trading uh, SPY has a huge leverage. For instance, here you see uh, one of my trading day trading uh, the August and the October puts here getting into 2022 on the SPY weekly options. And those are the same day expiry. Besides those, you can see those were 56 DTE date to expiration. And you can see that, for instance, here are 419 put, you know, that cost $2.02, went to $10.54. So you're talking here about a 5x your money, which presented a nice opportunity for 4,000, right? So you can see, you can take small amounts of money here, 142, right, to 179. That's over 20% uh, return, uh, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, here, nine into 1272, and this is on the 56 days to uh, expiration, right? But generally speaking, you're going to see the velocity of multiplication and the multiplier to grow small accounts fast by trading the zero day to expiration, which usually you are going to see you trade them on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And by the way, that's a very important uh, thing to know because I try to really avoid the Tuesday chop, right? And I try to avoid the Thursday uh, sideway to up because what they do here is they position themselves to have the best option premium on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Typically, another point also when you trade SPY options, to keep in mind, it's always better to trade puts, right? So why is it better to trade puts, right? Uh, one of the reasons is when you look at a $1 option, right? There's three components into a dollar option. You have a real value into the options, a term value in the option, and the implied volatility in the option. So let's say I break down that one dollar option right there. Let's say there's real value 10 cents, term value, let's say there's 40 cents, and there's implied volatility, volatility of 60 cents. If the market tanks, guess what? Real value on the put option right here, is going to go up, term value is going to go sideways to down for expiration, and the implied volatility is going to explode. Why? When the market goes up, the fear factor goes up, which means the implied volatility, the VIX, or the implied volatility in the options is going to go up. So I have two out of the three components going my way. Now, I am not a big fan of calls because look what happened. Same the option, but this time it's a call. So like volatility in the option, right? You break it by three. You do here the same 10 cents. Here, let's say uh, time value is 40 cents. Implied volatility is 60 cents, right? Guess what happened? If it's a call and the market goes up and rip off, look, what happened to the fear factor? The fear goes down. When the market goes up, fear goes down, which means your implied volatility goes down. So this IV would go down. This time value will go down because it expires worthless and the real value will go up. Now I have two out of the three components in an option that goes against me. So I'm more of a fan of put to start with. Now, let's remember one thing, guys. You got to understand that even though I'm showing you here that this option, this 419 put multiplied by five, right? You got to understand that options are super dangerous, especially guys, the options that expire the same day. You know, I want to cut it where 90% of the day trader lose money anyway. So when you go after options that expires at 4 p.m., 
It's a huge high risk, high reward situation. You know, some would say you gamble, it's highly a gamble. But what I'm, I'm countering the gamble uh, argument is this, is in this case, I'm, I'm risking $2 to make $5. So I'm risking one to make five. And I love those asymmetrical bet because when I do SPY options or SPY weekly options, I buy stuff that are between 40 cents and a buck. You know, so I know my maximum loss per contract is going to be 40 cents or $40 on option to $1 to $100 on option. So 40 to 100 would be, so you know it's very well defined. How much will you lose per contract? It's very well defined. And those options explode. So let me show you some case studies, but I want also to cut through the fact that they are extremely dangerous, everybody. And uh, my results here, I use them for the case study of this uh, video, but it's not to, uh, it's not a promise that you can do this. Uh, and it's also a way for you to think about your risk and reward in SPY trading options. So if you go back here, I want you to know and have realistic uh, rate of returns, guys. Okay, if you plan your trades and you do your analysis properly, it will help you and help you a lot to uh, do well in options trading. Even uh, if you know and understand where you are in the economical cycle curve, are you at the euphoric stage of a bull market? Are you at a fear point, at the desperation point, at the panic point? And by the way, between the denial and the panic and the despair here, trading options is a great time. But then when the economical cycle comes back here, that's a terrible time to do options and SPY options. You're better off buying assets stocks or cryptos for the long term, long run, because then you start another five year to seven year cycle. So hopefully that helps. Now, the next thing you want is realistic expectation, right? Um, Warren Buffett for the past 40 years does 20% return on his money, right? So I showed you one options that did 500% of its money that day, right? Well, this is an incredible fate. This is like hitting a home run. Right, but if you look at the best investor of all time, right, is hit 20% return for 40 years. If you do 20% for 20 years and you invest in your Roth IRA, 5,500 or 6,000 dollars starting in capital, and you make additions, guess what? You'll have 1.4 million dollars. So this is not shabby. You know, it's like 20% is super, super powerful. So anything that you get above 20% when you trade SPY options, I want you to keep in mind that you have fantastic return above one of the best investors of all time. And this is a problem that I see, guys, is a lot of guys, they trade SPY trading options. I have helped hundreds and hundreds of guys, right, since 2010 trading the SPY options and the SPX uh, credit spread. And what they do is they, they get their 10%, their 20%, and they want more. They are looking for that 5x, that 3x. I never look for the 5x on the 3x, guys. I have a process. Look for my open interest. And we'll go over that. Open interest, volume, my support, my resistance. I box my trade. I box uh, the, the strike that I choose from a resistance in the money to a support out of the money options. And I box them like this, right? And guys they want more than the 20 percent they are okay this is doubling this is tripling but it's you're like a baseball player focus on the process and the rest will take care of itself you go for single and doubles go 20 percent 30 percent 50 percent and then eventually yeah you will hit those home run and those multiples another thing very important when you trade options and spy options is where are we you know in terms of the vix you know do we have a vix that is high uh, a low, sorry, 0 to 20, in which case you buy directional options, you know, put and calls. Again, favorite would be the put on the SPY. But if the VIX is super high, we're at 45 or even above 30, then you have to say, is it better for me to trade SPX credit spread? So you need to know where you, you uh, land into the fear because any day that you're going to trade either SPY or SPX options credit spread, right? You have to understand if you have the odds in your favor and the odds in your favor is to look where you stand in relationship to the weekly range on the VIX, right? 
And this is very important because as we've seen, your option, your SPY trading options, whether it's a weekly options that expires on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or 56 days out, like I showed you, is dependent also on implied volatility, real value, time value, three components of an option, right? So, and the next thing is, look, we use tools and probability calculator and support and resistance and uh, trend clouds. See, this is a, a down cloud here. This is an up cloud blue here. I have probability here, here, you know, shorting at the edge here, buying at the edge here. That gives us a structure here also with the institutional power volume indicator and et cetera, and et cetera, from the institution. And here they come net blue, net buyer, net buyer, net buyer, net buyer. So you got to have a little edge, whether you use support and resistance, moving average, volume profile, whether you use indicators to help you make better decisions, try to find your edge in the market to help you understand where you are going to take those strikes in your options. Okay? Now, another thing also is to understand uh, uh, volatility and the time decay of an option. If you start buying options that are here at about 70 days or above, you see that the time decay is very negligible. It's kind of almost flat, really, right? But then when you start buying options here at the 45-day mark, look what's happening. Mm. Time decay starts accelerating. And what I like when you arrive at the zero day to expiration on the SPY, right? Guess what? All the volatility, pretty much all the, the time value is gone anyway. So this is why they are super cheap. This is why I'm able to get them between 50 cents and a dollar. Because all that implied volatility, that, that time value, sorry, that decay that started 120 days ago is already gone in the option, right? Now, I want to show you some real money case study and looking at option chart. I think it will help you also understanding some of components. And then we'll talk about data management on how to mitigate risk trading the SPY option. So here, let me go here. And hopefully you can see. Okay, so here you can see this is a day on September 6, 2022. I've done 16,500 trading the uh, SPY options. You can even see the strike that I did. I cornered the market essentially with 389 puts and 392 puts. You can see here I'm at roughly about the same amount, 7,500 on one and 8,900, almost 9,000 on the other one. Now, I want to show you the, the why did I choose the 392? Why did I choose that 389 that day, right? And I want to show you here the options. So here's the options that I took. This is the 392 puts, right? And I bought this 392 puts. And by the way, this is something that you really want to do with your options, everybody, is to uh, uh, map the options. You want to look at the option chart itself. So I bought this option around a dollar fifty-five here. And you can see they jump roughly all the way to about four bucks, right? And 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 they've done that like fairly fast, guys. Yeah, this is this was done in less than an hour. And then look, they started selling back, and then they had to reconstruct towards the later part of the day. Which, by the way, brings the second point: when you trade uh, SPY options weekly, you really want to be done by 11 a.m. Like ideally, 11 a.m you want to be done because after what's going to happen, most of the days you are going to be caught on the chart, chart, chart. So you need to be very, very careful, everybody. Okay. The second thing also is I had the 389s, the, the 392. So here, look, the 392 shows you then they come back later on during the day around 3 p.m., 1 p.m. And they have the chop chop period of 11 a.m. to about uh, this 3 p.m. area. So you got to be very careful. Okay. Next, uh, we look at the uh, 389s. And you can see, because the 389s were out of the money, so look, I corner our probability calculator like this. The edge resistance was at 392. The bottom was at 389. And I'll show you the replay on trading view. And this is what I did. So I did one that was in the money and, and, and one that was deep out of the money. 
So it's pretty cool because here you average 155 entry and here I average about 55 cents entry. So look, between the two options, I have like a one box average. And typically I don't think it's very effective to trade two strikes because it's very, very hard to be very good at managing two strikes. I have the experience. I've done it for many, many years, guys. But ideally, you want to stick to one strike because it's very difficult to uh, uh, pound your market order in and out with two strikes. Now, let me show you the trading view uh, probability power indicator of that day. So it's September 6th, roughly after this 9 o'clock, 9.30. We have the probability here uh, at 50-50. But I knew that the cloud started turning uh, purple for the downside to go to the edge here and complete the uh, support of the probability calculator where it would give me a 66% of a probability by here and a 66 probability percent by here on the long-term calculator. So look, if you play the replay, you kind of see what happened. It starts, boom, it tank, it tanked to our institutional uh, red institutional support zone here, 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 and then it starts reconstructing slowly for the rest of the day. But I got this first drop here on your left. That was the first morning drop. And then you can see they reconstruct from the high probability here and high probability here, which they proceeded after that on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to buy the market to the other side of the calculator you know, other side of the institutional resistance here and here, okay? So you got to have a process that helps you. When I came that day, everybody, especially on the SPY, right? When I came that day on the SPY, we can do it here, SPY five minutes. So here, here you go, September 6th, we play the replay from the zones and you can see I had this 394, so let's play it. here, look. So now it shows why and how I chose my strike. Here on that edge, I had 392. So I look at this edge with this resistance here, this yellow dashes. That's about the 392. This is why I got the strike at 392. Now, notice the other edge is 389. Roughly, this is this 388, 389. So I took the strike 389. So the, by using a process, you know, either it's your cloud, either it's your support and resistance, I look at our probability power calculator for support and resistance, and then this is how I establish the uh, in the money and the out of the money uh, SPY options to trade. And then the rest is a story, you know, it tanks. See, you see it tanking, boom, 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 and it comes back and it comes back to the edge of the calculator and goes back down, right? And eventually it becomes a long, okay? So whatever is the uh, process that you use to choose your strikes, make sure that it is, it's helpful to you. Obviously uh, uh, has been helpful to us, you know, to uh, generate this type of money, right? But there's no false promises. This is very hard to trade SPY options, everybody, you know. Um, I want to talk about the risk on SPY options that uh, most people don't talk. It's called delta management, right? So hopefully this is going to help you. Look, if I look here, let's say you have a $10,000 account, right? And you have to figure how much risk am I going to put in this account? How much am I going to stress the account, right? Typically, I recommend you don't stress the account more than 5 to 10%. That should be your max. That means that you really should not risk more than 500 to 1,000 delta. This is a lot of delta risk. So what is a beta-weighted delta? It's a little bit more advanced here. See, I have beta-weighted check. It means that each time the SPY goes up or down, I am losing 500 delta, so $500 up or down, right? which means that I'm stressing my account by 5%. You need to be careful because if you go at 10% of your account and you go 1,000 delta, that shows that if you have 10 losers, you blow up your entire account. So that gives you a little bit of a 
quick way of understanding risk management and delta risk management when you trade SPY options or any options is how much are you stressing the account? And ideally, everybody, if you stay around 300 delta in your account, which is about 3% on $10,000, you will be fine. So hopefully, guys, this is helpful. You know, at the end of the day, you know, day trading is super dangerous. 90% of the people lose money day trading. You know, you have to call a cat, a cat. I've done this for 28 years. You know, there's a lot of YouTubers that are going to make it easy. You know, it takes a long, long time to be good at those SPY options. So what you need to do is refine them. It's like going at the gym. Bench press, uh, I don't know me, 135 pounds first. And then build up 150, 175, 200, 225. Get used to stress your account to uh, account levels that are not going to blow up your account. Because SPY trading is very hard. But if you master doing 20%, 30%, double, triple, quadruple in, in your account, you know, all it takes, guys, if you think really carefully, it takes nine doubles. You are nine doubles away from a million dollars. 5,000 becomes 10, it's one. 20, you know, 40, 60, 120, 240, 480, uh, 480, 860, and boom, nine. You are a million something. So nine doubles, if you can master those with small amounts of money, it's all about taking asymmetrical risk. Small amount of money, a lot of reward. Small amount of money means if you blow up, you lose small. Because I'm still a big believer, guys, that... If you look at your money management, it, is, it took me a long time, guys, and I've done this for a long time, over 20 years, guys, you know, that you need to have three pyramid. You have your day trading pyramid, maybe you put 10%, it's highly risky. Uh, you have a second pyramid where you have 10% in uh, swing trading, cryptos or whatever, and wealth and safer stuff with uh, a deep out of the money put for income, or uh, real estate, or dividend stocks, or the trifecta, you sell puts, you get assigned stocks, etc. here for 80% of your assets. If you do that, guys, you will always be in a situation, right, to be safe or safer, because the max you can lose in your life then becomes 20% of all your cash assets. You lose all of this and lose, lose all of this. Look, you still have 80% of everything. But the problem that I see in day trading is a lot of everybody comes with 80% of everything they have and they do the opposite. They day trade with that and stuff. And that's the kiss of death. Okay. So last but not least, you know, it takes time. You know, be patient with yourself. This guy didn't go from here to here to here in one week. It took him uh, 15 weeks. It might take you six months, one year to become a better trader. And most importantly, guys, surround yourself, you know, with people who are on the same missions that trades for real, trade real money, you know. Like I cannot stress that enough on YouTube. A lot of people listen on YouTube, people that do not trade real account and do not trade real live in front of people, okay? So if this is helpful, don't forget, check the link below. We have a free Discord group every day we give free pre-market analysis, check our power indicators if you're interested, if that can help you. And most importantly, check the stuff that we do with SPY in our live trading group. You take care, everybody. Hope we'll see you in our Discord group. And hopefully, most importantly, this video was helpful. Maybe you got hopefully one or two nuggets. We'll continue doing some SPY video for you. Take care, everybody. Stay safe.